Uh, this is uh, the 538 uh, wireless information networking course and uh, uh, we are going to have 12 lectures one midterm and one final exam and today's lecture which is our first class it starts with overview of the course and then uh, we go for uh, a part which we call it uh, wireless applications and technologies which is overview of the wireless networks really. So the first part of the lecture which is this particular uh, part, uh, uh, the second one which is overview of the networks is two parts. So we will have three parts in this particular class. Now uh, the course is uh, broadcasted in uh, here for our own local ADLN students and also it goes to Finland for the students in the, who have registered for this course in Finland. Uh, the criteria for the students for grading is different in two different countries because they are registered for different programs. The students in Finland are registered for uh, getting credit at the University of Oulu in Finland and the students in here are getting credit from WPI. And the way that they get assessed are different also. So the thing which is in common is like lecture material and assignments. But the way that the assignments are handled in here and in Finland are different. The way that the exams are handled are different in here and in Finland. But basically all of us are using the website. The website that we use is the so-called MyWPI. And when you go to MyWPI, Actually, you can go there through uh, wpi.edu and then select it in here. And then uh, I have already logged in, so it doesn't come in. But if you're not logged in, you have to log in. And then among the courses, I have these many courses, which are, which are more previous courses. But the students are coming with the courses that they have, which is a different version. In this case, I'm talking about wireless information network, this course. I come in here, and then on the website I have like announcements, course information, staff information, course documents, assignments, communications, discussions, etc. The important ones in here are, uh, one is the course information, course information. In there I have already left a syllabus for you, which is the syllabus of the course. And then I have errata to the textbook. and I have like notes for ADLN students, some guidelines, and also some guidelines for those who are ADLN and they want to use MATLAB if they don't want to buy a student version and use it in their own computers. These are very uh, standard things that I will put in there. And um, then uh, if you come back to this course documents, this course documents is the area that I'm putting my, uh, my lecture notes. And also the videos are going to go there. So when you go to this course document, you have like different, today I have only part one. Course has four parts. Under part one, I have several reviews, uh, several videos. One of them is course overview. The other one is the lecture one, part one and two, which will be inserted after this class. So you go there, right now we don't have the videos, later on the videos are coming in because they are under preparation. And then you have PDF of my lecture, which right now I have distributed that in the class, and there are two of them. One is for overview of the course, and the other one is for uh, lecture one, which is the second part. So as the time passes by, uh, this thing starts to grow in different parts. At the end, we will have four parts. And then I will have additional audiovisual support that I may add to that as it comes. Then another important place is assignments. Right now, I have assignment number one, which is your homework number one. I put like one week for that, and uh, it's basically reading chapter one and two of the text and reading chapter one of reference three, 
which is available in the uh, Prentice Hall uh, website free. Okay. So I will put the directions a little bit later, or I put a copy in there a little bit later. But if you want to go to the Prentice Hall and type my name, then you get the book. And then in the book page, they have free chapter. That free chapter is chapter one. You can read that and then answer questions at the end of that. Okay? Uh, so that is basically homework for the first week. And it's due to next Friday. Now, uh, another uh, thing in here that I want to go over perhaps is the announcement. Right now I don't have announcement, but usually I put the announcements in there regularly. It's very comfortable, very convenient to communicate through the system. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted to say for the time being about the website and my WPI. So I can close this and see if you have any questions regarding regarding using the website. So if you don't have any questions, I can just start my course, the overview of the course, actually. Uh, for the overview of the course, uh, basically, uh, I have a few slides, and uh, we want to go over them and see what is going on. That's my name, Kave Palavan. It's very difficult to read, but you can have your own uh, reading of that. I have no problem. And then my teaching assistant is not yet finalized. It would be Bardia, uh, but uh, it has to be finalized later on. Now, uh, the textbook for the time being is the Wireless Information Network by John Wiley and Sons, 1995. This one was my first book that I wrote in, uh, and also it was the first textbook in wireless networks. Historically, that was the first one. And basically, uh, uh, in the last year, I had a uh, last year or two, me and my co-author, uh, Dr. Alan Loves, were uh, preparing the second edition of the book. So the material that I'm presenting in this course is based on the second edition, which is under print. So the figures and things that are extra uh, in your handouts you will receive. I may put part of writings, extra writings also there for you before the print of the book. Okay. Uh, I cannot provide those material, uh, I think, electronically because the publisher may not be happy with it. But I can print out and distribute it in the class, part of the material. That would be another bonus for those who are attending the class. My references, uh, if I use them, uh, one is uh, Gordon Stuber's Mobile Communication, second edition. Uh, the other one is Ted Rappaport's uh, Wireless Communication Principles. Ted's book actually was the second textbook in the field, published in 1986, uh, 1996, one year after the our textbook. And that's a good book. It's more toward undergraduate students, and it has been used as a very successful undergraduate textbook in many places. The third one is uh, the book that I have with Prashant, Principle of Wireless Networks, A Unified Approach. This one was published in 2002. This book, I used a version of that as a graduate work, Mobile Data Network, and a version of that, a smaller version, in our undergraduate program. This book is also used in a lot of undergraduate programs, which are more toward, uh, signal, uh, toward system engineering. Ted Rappaport's book is mostly used for those who are in signal processing. They want to have more into signal processing, channel modeling, and things like that at the undergraduate level. Then is like uh, John Prokis' uh, classic digital communication book, which we are using that in 532 and 533 in two of our courses in WPI. And that's a classic digital communication, signal processing aspects, okay? 
and the fourth or actually the fifth one now I mean in here is the fifth one fifth uh, reference is the second edition of the current book that is under print and I think it comes up with the label of 2006 because if they get printed around like July, September they put the next year on it sometime uh, so uh, this is like our references now the next thing is uh, basically uh, for the wireless networks uh, there are three aspects one is applications and business development and in the old time people were not putting lots of emphasis on that for uh, the books so if you look at digital communication for example where John Prokis doesn't have any think about like products, standards and uh, I started actually in 1995 to do that to put some sort of standards, applications, products inside the textbooks and later on, Ted Rappaport did that, and other people continued to do that. Means that rather than only talking about like uh, signal processing aspects and mathematical techniques, also you talk about applied systems, and you try to correlate your like technical material with the development of the standards. Why this thing is happening now? Because now really we have a body of knowledge which is very very big in statistical communication and signal processing that it gets applied in different packages to develop different industries if you want to learn everything all the time it's very challenging but you have to package it for the particular thing so you go for wireless lands you need a different package you go for cellular networks you have a different package you go for like wired networks, you have a different package. Okay, so it's good to talk about that packaging. Okay, how the existing body of knowledge get applied and packaged into a particular standard, like 802.11, for example. That's how I believe, that's my philosophy of teaching wireless networks. And I call it a system aspect of wireless network. So if I want to talk about channel modeling, I want to talk about channel models which are used in 802.11 for example it's not like that in if you go to John Prokis's book okay and that's the difference between these courses so it's applied mathematics to existing standards and products who will benefit out of that a system engineer who is system engineer a person who sits in a standardization committees which is now a big part of the industry, in particular wireless industry. So everybody wants to comply with the standards, otherwise they don't survive. Okay, now, but when we go now to this, uh, uh, now wireless networks in general, so one is applications and business standards products, which is common between all the courses that I teach. So I teach the mobile data network course, and this course, almost more or less introductions are exactly the same okay but how do I differentiate them differentiation between two aspects I call them networking aspects and signal processing and air interface design aspects okay networking aspects has again principles of air interface deployment operation of the network and it has a detailed description of wide area and local area networks, standards, means that how the packets are getting formed and how they are supported when a mobile user is moving across. Okay, so for a wireless network we have like uh, these detailed aspects which are related to the network, how to deploy the network, how to manage and deliver the data as somebody is moving around. Okay, there are a lot of detailed issues in there. They are not, many of them are not very mathematical or they are not signal processing, they are general math. Okay, those type of things are covered in this mobile data network course, which is also broadcasted in Finland and in here. In here the number is EE539S and CS525W. 
Then the issue of signal processing for air interface design, which is the concept in this course. This one talks about modeling and simulation of the wireless media, modern design technologies, and emerging technologies. I mean, core knowledge of emerging technologies. Today, emerging technologies in wireless networks, one is ultra wideband and one is wireless geolocation networks. So, if I can, I will call them on their system aspects. Modeling, modeling and simulation of the wireless medium is the basic content of wireless networks. In other course, we have only one lecture. In here, we have like six lectures. So we will see how we can simulate the channel. Modern design technology, this part, is common between this course, 532 possibly, and 533 possibly. And uh, at the same time, it has one lecture in here, but in here it's like four lectures, five lectures. Now, what is the purpose of that? We are talking about modern design technologies which are applied to wireless networks, and we compare their performance. When we are in mobile data network, we don't talk about performance that much. In here, we talk about performance. So that's the thing that we have on top. So what we are doing really is we are learning about the medium, how to simulate the medium, and how to use that characteristics of the medium to find the performance of different modems. And that particular issue is the issue which is behind all the standardization decisions. Okay. Now, then we talk about some systems which are examples of applications of whatever we have seen. So that's basically what we are talking about in this course. Okay, and that's what is like learning outcome. Some people, they say wireless is, uh, uh, is a propagation and application. Because the rest of things are like common between wireless and wired networks. Okay, the wireless part. So here we are talking about basically that propagation thing and impact of that in design of the modems, which is core content of wireless networks. Really. Now, uh, tentative outline that I have, I just talked about it a little bit before. In this lecture, one lecture, I give you overview of the wireless information networks. Then I will have like five lectures on modeling and simulation of the wireless media. We have some projects associated with that which are very practical and useful. Then we have modem design technologies in four weeks. In those four weeks, we talk about basic of the modem technologies, signal processing aspects, and spread the spectrum technology. Then we have last two weeks, we talk about ultra wideband and wireless geolocation systems. Reading all of this, we find out the uh, core technology under the so-called location-aware broadband ad hoc networks. This is the title of today. I mean, trend of the today wireless networks is the so-called location-aware. I mean, that's the title of one of my edited book also, location-aware uh, broadband broadband ad hoc wireless networks. This is the trend. Always these things, they go with trends. Networks. Okay, now, location aware is geolocation. Broadband is those broadband modems that we will study. Ad hoc is a part that we may study in the other course, mobile data networking course because that one is more, mostly like routing and issues related to that. Now, uh, so more or less, then uh, in this field actually, in the field of broadband ad hoc, broadband, location aware, broadband ad hoc wireless networks, then we have also gimmicks, which are latest, I mean, activities. I will show you more, but if you want to, I mean, bring them under like, very a small subtitle. I would say two hottest topics in the past couple of years. One was ultra wideband. The other one was like uh, 
uh, if you ca call it is wireless uh, geolocation. Geolocation. This wireless geolocation in particular is very hot this year. A lot of programs in DARPA and other places. And basically what they are using this geolocation systems is, I mean the challenge uh, is indoor because outdoor they have GPS, indoor and in urban areas, and the application uh, from the military point of view is for urban fighting, just to locate people inside the buildings. It's a very, very challenging, in fact, uh, uh, project and a lot of interest in the industry around it. Ultra wideband, ultra wideband provides very, very high data rates. And there are like commercial interest in that. The commercial interest is like, in summary, they want to have like uh, wireless uh, USB connector to the computer, around 400 megabit per second. That's what they want to do. So you don't need any wire to connect your camera or whatever to the computer. Okay, that's one thing. We will see more of that later. For the positioning, uh, and then uh, in the military, they are interested in ultra wideband uh, because uh, it provides better ranging also. And you can add, it's a spread spectrum technology in a sense, and you can add more uh, anti-interference and protection against jamming to that. Okay. Uh, wireless geolocation, there are a bunch of applications like E911, for example, that is around and people are very, very interested and keen to add that to the wireless networks. That actually, that was a mandate by FCC in the United States. And a lot of people, they think that future of wireless network is toward like uh, location aware services, if you want to call it. Okay, so that's the commercial interest. In the military, as I told you, they are very interested to locate the soldiers and people and other equipment inside the buildings very accurately. So that would be another to two topics that we I would like to have some emphasis in this course as we will go along. Now. That was the overview of the things. Now, what is the semantic of the course? I will have homework assignments and questions which are coming at the end of each lecture. So lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, they have their own like homeworks associated. Then I'm planning, I have like four projects. I may not give all of them, but I may give some of them, some of them optional, I will try. Last time I give, I, I, I think I gave three of them two or three of them, last time when I offered this course. One is simulation of narrowband channel, which is simulation of received signal strength, basically. How you simulate the received signal strength. That's a project. Okay? Received signal strength in the wireless channels is not fixed. It's a statistical process which is always moving, changing. How do you want to simulate it? Why do you want to simulate it? Because any system that I have, if I want to know the performance, I have to know what will happen to the received signal strength. Very, very important topic. The se second one is we have some results of actually wideband measurements of the channel. And I give you the result of measurements. You process them, and you draw different uh, uh, parameters out of them, which are vital for the analysis of wireless networks. We will learn about those parameters as we go along. The third one is simulation using ray tracing software. Again, you put the location of transmitter and receiver, and it gives you the channel impulse response, for example. And then you do some analysis on top of that. And you draw some parameters out of it. Now, the last one, if I do it, is like a simple simulation of an OFTM system. That would be the last project. And as I said, uh, I will see how things evolve later on. In terms of grading, uh, basically projects and homework, I think, is like 30%. Midterm, like 30%. Final exam, like 40%. But in reality, when it boils down in a graduate course, is that 
I take the midterm exam, final exam, I add them up, and then I look at the homeworks and projects. If people are on the boundaries between A and B, then I decide based on their performance on the homework and project. If they are between B and C, I decide based on the performance on them. Because basically we are like a detection problem in here. You have all these random, <laughs> random numbers as grades, and you have to detect A, B, or C. And detection when you're solid in the middle of the field is very easy. Okay? But when you're in the boundaries, always there is a difficult thing. So I use like projects and homeworks as a leverage for moving from one boundary to another boundary. But often there is another, in fact, incentive for doing the projects and homeworks. Uh, the incentive is that I put the midterm and final based on homeworks. So if you have done your homeworks yourself and you have got good grades for that, you shouldn't have problems in the exams. That's, that's what I usually do. So that's an incentive for a study. That's American system of education. Always you have to put weekly incentive so that everybody studies every week. But European is, is, is different. The European is, is that like professors and authority to authorize that you have learned certain things. So everything is most focused on the exams. So that's what we do in here. So also for the students in Europe, this is an opportunity if they want to follow up with the American students to study the way that we do in here. It means 14 weeks rather than two weeks when it's close to the exam. Okay. So we will see. That's a good experience, actually. Uh, and with this thing, I will close the, uh, this, uh, if you want to call it, first part of our first meeting which was overview of the course. And uh, we start the second part in a, after a short pause.